I see that uh, uh, my way of representing nature, trying to find an uh, idea of nature, a concept of nature, was uh, coming from the modernism, much more uh, close to a kind of uh, a kind of editing, a kind of taking out some uh, information to be able to concentrate in uh, some structures. Like in the beginning, my works was mostly off-white. Then they begin to get colors because there were colors in the world. And then they begin to have much more uh, material dimension, like in the crochet that we have now. Uh, much more uh, handmade work, like bringing more the humanity, uh, bring more our body to this dimension. We are bringing this force of the forest that we call voice of the forest. And this voice here uh, is happening in me since a long time. There is a forest in Rio de Janeiro. Nature is very strong in Rio de Janeiro. We have these big mountains, the big sea, lake, bay, and a forest in the mountains. And this symbiosis that the plants grow together uh, had been very important always for me. And this voice of the forest doesn't come from a science, it comes from another knowledge, a shamanic knowledge, a spiritual knowledge. For them, everything is sacred. The sacredness is not far away in heaven, it's here on the plants, on the rivers, on the mountains. And they can talk with these spirits. And from this talk, they discover a lot of plants, healing plants, that are being used in the medicines, in the pharmacy that we can buy. When I drink with the Hunikuin, the ayahuasca, they call Nishipan, Huni, and Nishipan. Huni is the name of it. Nishipan would be the nickname. That means strong vine. Uh, on the second ceremony that I had been, this sacred ceremony for, for the Huni Queen, the Nishipan is the most sacred medicine. And uh, I had been put inside of a leaf. And I understand the nature in another dimension, a dimension that was already inside of me, because I've been trying to understand nature and to think about nature through the art since 30 years. And when I, when I uh, arrived in this situation, I saw all my work coming together. And it was a huge revelation for me. And the voice of nature that they have is the nature. When they speak, when they, they are deep speaking, they, is, the, is the plants speaking, is the birds, is the river, is the whole nature speaking, insects, uh, crickets. And uh, uh, what is uh, important on that is that this voice is alive. And they can bring to us this voice. They can teach us about this voice. So they are becoming my teachers nowadays, you know. I'm learning very much with them about this dimension. So uh, we are bringing here this voice, the voice of the forest, through the art. And through their art, we're going to have these drawings from them that uh, when I came back from the forest the first time, the only truth that I had is that they are all artists. And art for them is not something just to be there for you to see and to think about, but it's something that happens in their daily life, on, they, uh, on their clothes, on their, uh, uh, on their instruments, you know. It's not something outside of their daily life. It's together of their daily life to bring force to their movement into the life. The idea of healing for the Huni Queen is the idea of cleaning. Uh, because the negative spirits, the negative thinking is always coming to us. We need to clean all the time. We need to cure all the time. And this uh, negative thinking many times put us in a, in, a, in a jail. We can't move because there is something in our head. And this generates sickness, uh, organic sickness like uh, any any, any sickness that you need to go to a doctor, cancer, for example, and other things, because uh, we are not balanced spiritually. Uh, so this uh, touching spirit 
uh, has always been in our society and uh, I had always been working with that. And then when I begin to create these places for people to be, I begin to understand that it's important to create a place for people to be able to interact. Big mattress where people lay down in a different situation that puts them, expo uh, 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 sprouts on them a, a kind of joy that they begin to talk with the other. Uh, without knowing them. A guy who had worked on installing that with me and with taking care of the exhibition, he came to me and said, Ernesto, what the day I was here, and some teenagers come, and one of them begin to tell the other, you know, man, when I'm, my head is exploding, I come here, and I breathe, I rest a bit, and then I stay for a while, and then I go away. So it's already a healing process. So this healing process, this hug, I feel my work, the desire to hug the people and also to avoid, to create. This room was uh, all made by cotton, uh, knitting, cotton, uh, whatever, textile, so white, so you couldn't see outside. And outside we are receiving so much information, so, uh, yeah, so much information, pictures, uh, messages all the time that it fills us too much. So uh, in these spaces, you can forget about that. Breathe, be together with yourself, talk to the others without all this environment of information. And the interesting thing of this environment information is that is the, the environment of the full and not about the void. So what we are living now in the big cities is a, a, a landscape of the fullness, it's not anymore the relation between the figure and the background is not anymore ourself and the void around us. It's ourself and the excess, the excess of life. Artificial life, but life. You know, with cars, subways, buses, buildings, and information, information, information. Especially now with the internet, that we have so much information. On the art scene, for example, we have so much information, so much art being done, that it's difficult to clean the space and feel your own way, where you want to go uh, with the art, uh, or as a curator, where you want to go, what do you like to think through the art that's being done uh, everywhere nowadays. The interaction of the work, the touching of the work, had been always very important to me, and it's a very important thing on Brazilian tradition. Because the reality is that the Brazilians, the, we receive this Western education, but uh, our society is mixed. Uh, the first Brazilian is a son of a Portuguese and, and French that had been in Rio de Janeiro and in the north of Brazil, with indigenous people, with indigenous women. Uh, so for many years, and then came the, the Africans as slaves, and then people begin to make love, the white people begin to make love also with the African woman. So it had happened for 250 years. In 1757, uh, the Portuguese decided to send women to Brazil. So it was a long time of mixing. So in our spirit, this spirit of uh, indigenous and Africans are inside of our body, inside of our soul, inside of our society, inside of our culture. So this spirit of interaction is already, for example, in the samba. The samba, when we do a samba, it's like uh, normally you have a table, people are sitting there playing the guitars, playing the drums. Around this table there's people uh, playing other little things, uh, stand up, and there's people around dancing. So everybody's dancing and singing together and playing together. It's not a situation that the art is on the stage and the audience is there quiet uh, looking to that. It's a, it's a situation of interaction that everybody is doing the thing together. There's no this separation between the artist and the audience, like the, the one who knows and the others who receive. For the indigenous people, the most important thing, thing is the joy. It's the joy that occurs. We live for the joy. You know, uh, to, be, to be here in this planet, all of us, uh, when our fathers, uh, our parents, they made love, uh, the sperm, from our father. Everybody, millions of sperm, spermatozoids, they want running to that egg, that sacred egg from our mother, and they begin to dig. 
everybody digging for one of us get in because we need everyone digging to one of us get in. So a lot of brothers and sisters had to stay on the, on the road for us to be alive, for us to receive this gift. So it's our responsibility to find the joy in life. And I, I see that there is a, a super valorization of the death uh, on, on the society, you know, uh, uh, valorization, uh, almost uh, divining the suffering, saying that life is to suffer. We are here to suffer. No, we are here to the joy. You know, when our parents were making love, they were having joy, deep spiritual connection in between them to generate each one of us. So it's very important for us to understand this level that what is to be alive. And this is very much what I'm trying to, to, to do in every knot uh, of these sculptures. All these sculptures made by crochet is a, is a crochet made by fingers without a needle that uh, had been developed in my studio. Myself, I began to do crochet with my, my hands when I wanted to do it bigger and there was no needle to do. I tried to make a big needle and then I realized that I could do with my hands. And this knowledge had been spread out in my studio uh, in many different ways. All this textile is, is, is a cotton textile, uh, a vol that we fold, we make stripes, five centimeters each one, and then we cut all of it we make a roll of all of it, we dye all of it, choosing the level of the color we want. All of this color had been dyed on the studio. So there is hands of a lot of people, knowledge of a lot of people to make, uh, to prepare it, to make the crochet. So in every knot there is a life. Every knot has a brief. And brief, <sighs> for the Huni Queen, they call the wind newer. So when we put the wind inside and outside, we share with the nature. The wind that's getting out of myself might be getting out, getting inside of your breast now. So this is a touching uh, element uh, uh, that puts all of us together. And this wind, uh, it was dirty, poison. We couldn't live here. It took like uh, hundreds of millions of years that the plants were cleaning, cleaning this air, this wind, for us to be able to breathe, for the animals arrive in this planet. So the plants are our mothers. They have so much to teach you, to teach us. And that's what the Hawaiian Queen are trying to say, and all the indigenous people, they are trying to say to humanity since long time, and we don't have ears for that. The indigenous, they don't like to scream. They like to say the things. And sometimes if you don't scream in our society, or if you don't have a gun to say, this is the truth, people don't accept it. And now we are killing this planet. We became so uh, full of uh, uh, with vanity about being the, the, the owners of the culture, thinking that we are bigger than the animals, than the rivers, than the mountains. But culture is, a, is, a, is our nature, is fruit of our nature. So there is something beyond that is nature. And this something beyond is something that connects us to the, to, the, to the planet. You know, culture separates us. Nature unifies us. We need to go to this movement to unify us, to stop this crisis, these wars and this hate that's being spread around, to stop this fear that is being cultivated. We need to cultivate joy and not fear, friendship. This is the important thing and that's why we are here. Art is the place of the friendship. Art is the only place for subjectiveness that had rest in this objective society that we are living today. So it's very important uh, to keep this force of the art and spread this force and cure the society with this force of the art. The indigenous force, voice, can be very helpful to all of us. The imperfection of life is the best thing of life. It's what generates surprises, what generates joy, what generates life. 
So uh, when you move inside of the boa, when you sit down here, you begin to feel your body, feel your body different. And this feeling of your body begins to generate different way of thinking too. We think that think is the most important thing. And think takes us far away. But sometimes we go so much far away that we forgot to see what is around us. What our kid is doing, what our, where is your, our mother, you know. Uh, we are here, like, like babies, like, you know, here in this planet. To be alive, to share, to hug, to kiss, to exchange ideas. Let's live. Live is the best thing had been offered to anybody. It's better than a car, than a, a beer, than a anything. Any, any artificial paradise. There is a natural paradise that is just to be alive with our friends, making friends, and breathing. House, 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 house.